Hello everyone. In this video lecture, we are going to study about instruction pipelining. Now, pipelining process can occur not only in the data stream but also in the instruction stream as well. An instruction pipeline reads consecutive instruction from the memory while previous instructions are being executed in other segments, right? So this causes the instruction fetch and execute phases to overlap and perform the simultaneous operation, right? So what we are going to do that uh, previously we have already seen the arithmetic pipelining. So in that simultaneous operations are going to be, uh, are performed, right? So we can minimize the time. Similar way, we can use the same thing using instruction stream, right? If we divide uh, our instructions uh, stream in the segments, if we divide our instruction stream in segments, right? So different, different segments can perform different, different part of instruction execution, right? Now for that, first of all, you should know that what are the phases we have to execute the instruction so generally in a most of a general purpose computer the computer needs to process each of the instruction with the following steps right so first what we have that is fetch the instruction from the memory right first of all we need to fetch the instruction from the memory once the instruction has been fetched then we need to decode that instruction after decoding the instruction, we need to find the uh, effective address, that is calculate effective address, right? This is ultimately your instruction cycle, right? That first, uh, first we need to fetch the instruction, that we need to decode the instruction, then we need to calculate effective address, right? Now, this is not compulsory for all, right? Uh, normally effective address is already available in instructions right but if we are having indirect mode of addressing then we need to find effective address right then next we have fetch the operand right that is fetching the operand taking the operand uh, bringing the operand from the memory right then execute the instruction whatever instruction i'm having i need to execute that instruction and the last one that is store the result at the proper place that means if i want to store that in a memory so i have to store it in a memory right now what we are going to do that uh, we are going to prepare a pipeline that means we are going to create a segments right for this instruction execution right so what we are going to use that is four segment pipelining right four segment pipelining that is instruction pipelining right that means i need to divide the six step in four steps right so we are merging some of the operation right so first segment will do this fetching the instruction from the memory right this is individual that is fetching the instruction from the memory that would be performed by my segment one right now what i'm doing I'm merging this two operation that is decode the instruction and calculate the effective address. These two operations can be performed by segment 2, right? Now my segment 3 will do, what will my segment 3 will do? That is fetch the operand, right? That is segment 3, right? And again, I'm merging this two operation for my segment 4, that is execute the instruction and store the result at proper place right so i'm dividing this in my four segments right first segment will fetch the instruction second segment will decode the instruction and calculate the effective address third segment will fetch the operand and fourth segment will execute the instruction as well as store the result at proper place right so this will become my four segment instruction pipeline right now how it will work so for that we need to see a uh, flowchart right so we are having one flowchart so i'm having this flowchart for four segment pipelining right four segment cpu pipelining right so first my segment one what it will do that is fetch the instruction from the memory 
right that is a working of first segment then we'll go to the second segment what is the work of second segment that is decode the instruction and calculate the effective address right now here there is a twist right now what that twist is we need to check whether it is a branch instruction or not right if it is not the branch instruction then we'll fetch the operand and execute the instruction but if it is a branch instruction then we are going to jump to a particular location right and from that location execution will going to process right so further execution will start from that particular location right so what we need to do we need to update the program counter so first and second segment will do that work after that we'll need to we need to check whether there is a branch instruction or not and then uh, that we can do after segment 2 only right because segment 2 that is decode the instruction after decoding the instruction only we get to know whether it is a branch instruction or not right and if it is a branch instruction then we need to update program counter right then updating the program counter this empty pipe we need to empty my pipe why it is necessary i'll tell you later right with example i'll tell you with the time space diagram right now just consider that up, after updating program counter we need to empty pipe right this i'll tell you later right then what we are going to do fetch operand from the memory if branch is not there that means it's a normal instruction without branching right so we fetch the operand from the memory that means we are taking the operand bringing the operand from the memory right and after that would be done by segment 3 right and then in a segment 4 execute the instruction that instruction is going to be executed right after the execute uh, execution part we need to check whether there is an interrupt or not it might be possible there is an interrupt right so if there is an interrupt then it will go to the interrupt handling part right if there is no interrupt then it will continue fetching the next instruction again it's a cycle so it will continue fetching the next instruction right if there is an interrupt then it will go to the interrupt handling part right interrupt handling part that portion is stored at some particular location so again we need to update the program counter right and after updating the program counter what we need to do we need to empty the pipe right and after this again this is going to be uh, so uh, again it will go to the fetch the instruction right now if we see this entire process using time space diagram then you will get to know actually how it will done right so suppose i'm having i'll show you using time space diagram so suppose i'm having steps over here you can say that is a cycle right clock cycle that is 1 2 3 4 Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Right? Here, this is then. Here, I'm having instructions. So that would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Right? Now, what we are having? We are having uh, four steps, four segments. Right? so first i'm having fetching the instruction so i'm going to use the symbol fi that is for fetching the instruction right then this is for fetching instruction right then this is for decoding the instruction that is da then i'm having f for that is fetching the operand and then i am having ex for execution execution of the instruction right now in the first timing cycle or you can say in the first step my first instruction will go in the fetching segment right segment 1 that is fetching the instruction right 
at first cycle my first instruction will be in the fetching instruction this is my segment 1 2 3 and 4 right i am writing the symbols for that right so i am here having this fi right now in the second cycle my first instruction will complete its fetching part right so it will go for the decode section right so in the second part my first instruction will go for the segment 2 that is decode the instruction right at that time segment 1 is free fetching the instruction that is free so for that my second instruction will go in fetching the instruction part right I think you all know this because we have already done this with uh, arithmetic pipelining right so in the second cycle my second instruction would be in the segment 1 that is fetching instruction and first instruction will be in the second segment that is decoding part right now in the third cycle third cycle my first instruction will be in the third segment that is fetching operon segment right it will fetch the operon right along with this my second along with the same uh, same cycle in the same cycle my second instruction will go in the decoding part that is decode the instruction right and my third cycle will uh, third instruction will go in the fetching part right now assume that my third instruction is branch instruction this third instruction is a branch instruction right my first and second instructions are normal instructions right uh, my fourth instruction is also a normal instruction but my third instruction that is branch instruction right so that we on we only come to know that is it's a branch instruction when we decode that instruction so till now i don't know whether it is a branch instruction or not right in the fourth cycle in the fourth cycle my first instruction will go in the execute part right my second instruction will go to the fetch operand part my third instruction will go to the decode part and i'm having fourth instruction that will go in the fetch instruction part right now at the completion of this fourth cycle we get to know that is it's in branch instruction right that particular instruction is branch instruction but it is not compulsory that if there is a branch instruction it will do branch because sometimes we have conditional branch also right so at the point of we fetch the operand and at the time of execution only we get to know whether we need to branch or not right so till that this fourth instruction will be on the halt right so in the fifth cycle first instruction is already executed right second instruction will be in the execution post, uh, portion right execution segment third instruction will be on the fetching operon right but as you know that my third instruction at this point you get to know that my third instruction is a branch instruction so we hold this instruction why to hold this instruction because we don't know if there if there is a there might be possible there is a conditional branch right so if conditional branch is there so based on uh, some condition branch uh, it might be possible there will be a branch or there will not be a branch right so we need to check whether it is a branch or not so for that we need to execute that instruction right now at that at this cycle uh, second instruction will execute it right third instruction will go in the execution part that is in the sixth cycle right till that also this is at the hold portion so again here also i am having this hold right now after this execution after this execution if there is no branch if there is no branch so my seventh cycle will continue with this right my fourth instruction is already fetched right so it will start with decode the instruction right and this will start with fetch the instruction if there is no branch then 
right this is possible if there is no branch after execution if i get to know that there is no branch so it will continue with this this is at the hold part right so fetch instruction already fourth instruction is fetch so it will continue with decode instruction and my fifth instruction will be going to fetch right but if there is a branch then what right if there is a branch that means what we need to jump for a particular location right we need to check for a particular location right so for that my program counter is updated and after that we need to again fetch the instruction that is at the particular location right so this fetching is no of no use right this fetch instruction this instruction which is already fetched i am having um, there is no use for this right because we are going to jump at a particular location right for example say 1024 right my current location is uh, uh, 999 right and the next instruction to be executed that is 1000 but the jump is given to the 1024 location right so we need to execute the instruction that is at the 1024 location so again it will fetch the instruction so here i am having fetch instruction at the seventh cycle and this will not be my fourth instruction this will be the instruction that is given by this branch right so after this fetch instruction this will be again at the hold part right then at the eighth cycle this will be at the decode part and the next instruction will be at the fetch part right then again at the ninth cycle it will be at the fetch operand part this will be at the decode instruction part this will be at the fetch instruction part right and at the 10th cycle it will be executed right this will be in the fetch operand part and here i am having decode part right getting this so this is important so if there is a branch if there is no branch then we continue with this and if there is a branch we need to update the program counter that's why here we are having this empty pipe right because we need to replace this all already available value already available instruction that is already fetch we need to clear this fetch why because my instruction to be executed is somewhat else right so we need to clear this for that i need to empty this pipe right so i hope you understand you all understand this uh four segment pipelining right this is the time space diagram for the four segment pipelining right now uh, there are some conflicts occur in the pipelining these are known as pipeline conflicts right some pipeline con some pipeline conflicts are there so we need to check that pipeline conflicts right so this pipeline conflicts we are going to study in the next video right so i think you all understand with this uh, four segment pipelining right thank you